Hello everyone and welcome to episode number three of this free course. We're calling this course Learn Penetration Testing and Level Up Your Career from Beginner to Pro. In this video we are going to look into hacking into any Windows PC within your network. We are going to use a Python project written as a remote access tool or otherwise known as RAT to get to gain reverse shell of a remote computer. So in this video we are going to look into basic functionalities of a remote access tool. The project is based on a repository by Fred P. Wall. I was going through GitHub and I found the project that's quite compelling and quite written good. As for the beginners who want to learn penetration testing and uh, look into the final step of penetration testing, which is maintaining access. So this tool is going to help you a lot in your practice of maintaining access to your, your zombie machines. Furthermore, we are going to look into the code how it's written, what we are doing in that script, and then we are moving on to live demonstration of using those scripts to get access to those Windows machines. So if we move on towards this repository, it has two files in it. One is client and another is server, obviously. Server is for the server while the client script is going to be used on any other machine that you're planning to pawn or you're planning to make it as a zombie machine or if you have already taken over any machine and you want to maintain the access to it this this uh, reverse shell is going to help you to connect to that phone machine every time you want or every time that machine boots up so a remote access tool is a reverse shell for gaining access of a remote computer using terminal to exchange the data. The server communicates with the client by sending it commands to execute on the client machine and thereby hijacking the client machine. So now this part will say how to get it on the client system. And it says this is the hard part of this. It is up to you. You can either gain physical access to the system or send it by any means possible to the client machine. Well, that's true. You can use social engineering or any other tool that any other any other trick that you might know. But we are not here to discuss all of those things. So let's get into the command. What it what, what it can do. It can list all the connected devices, and from those connected devices, you can select the device by its ID. You can download a file to the server from a remote system, and you can send a file from a server to the client system, which is a good functionality. You know, if you want to uh, download something in your computer, like if there is a, if there is some sort of information that you really want, or if there is uh, a capture the flag kind of thing where you have to download a file as a proof, then this tool will be perfectly uh, capable of doing that. And finally, you can just write quit to exit out of uh, the client section. Anyways, it's here this is the most important thing that always stay ethical this was made for educational and this video is definitely for the education purposes it's not for you to go out and hack into your neighbor's computer or any other computer on, on your network or do any malicious activities or try to be on the wrong side of the internet so this is just for educational purposes and any kind of malicious activity is definitely not appreciated. So use it for completely clean and ethical purposes. So we are going to jump into the files right here. So the server 
Pi. It's a pretty much basic uh, script which is using TCP protocol to connect to uh, to to the remote computer and do the communication between server and the client. If you're familiar with the Python, you might go through it and you will get the basic idea how uh, this program is using um, socket and using threading for faster operations, whereas the client script is uh, using a bunch of information that is predetermined with the, within the function that you import. So anyways, the one thing that I want to make sure before I execute this, uh, this script, the host, I prefer to use it always at 0.0.0.0 .0 because it's pretty much easier as I can show. Let me get into my directory where I have cloned this repository. So if I say g init server.py There you go. It allows you to connect to the server in any circumstances. If your server is running on a local address such as 10.10. something or even if it is running on another network like 192 or something. In both of these scenarios, if the client wants to connect back to you, the client doesn't have to keep hanging there just looking for the connection. It always helps you out in this in this scenario. We are using port 5764 in this case. You can change it as uh, as you like. And let's look into the client. .py. So in this client.py, I'm using the IP of this Kali machine to connect it back to. And definitely we're using the same port so we don't have any other uh, connectivity issues. So let's move on to uh, the machine where we want this operation to happen. So I'm going to our desktop to my Windows machine. So let's make a new folder over here and call it client. And put this file into it. So the idea is pretty much simple since I am here in this uh, in this server or my Kali machine, I'm gonna go into this folder and by the way, I was using another tool called Loki, and I'm going to make a video about it. It's, it's another awesome tool. So let's say we want to start our server, and there we go. We have a remote shell over here, and as soon as we run this client script, it says successfully connected to the server. And there you go. You have connection successfully established at this IP remote IP and if you go back to the repository it has a few list of commands over here so let's say list to list all the connected devices and let's say select to select the device by ID and there we are we are connected to our remote computer. So let's say if I want to test it out whether it's working or not, I want to make a directory in it. Let's say one, two, three, and go back to it. And there you are with the directory one, two, three, right? So now I want to get to the point where it gets realistic. 
not every machine the Python install in it. So if you do not have Python, how you are going to deliver this payload or client file to a remote computer to gain access. So for this, I always uh, try to convert this Python script into an executable, which we can do with Let's just open up this in this folder directly so we don't have to navigate around. So I do it with PyInstaller most of the times and we are going to say as a one file and we are going to keep it hidden and then we are going to say client.py. Let it run for a while and it's going to give out an executable file for you. So you can toss around that file wherever you want on all the machines that you have the access to, like in front of here. I'm not performing this uh, kind of activity on any other computer that I do not have the permission to use. I'm using this on my own network, on my own machines, just to demonstrate how these things work. To learn these things, you must be capable of handling the information to use it in a proper way, to use it in a constructive way. All, all these videos and all these information is out there to make sure that you understand what is going on and how these things work instead of using it for uh, any kind of malicious activity. So I guess this process is almost done and we can go back to our Kali machine. You can see that oh, we are still connected to it. Because we are running here. All right, let's close it out and close this up. And let's see. Yeah, invalid connection was lost. Let's get out of there. Now we have this client.exe, an executable file. So let's try it out. Let's run our server, client.exe. As you know that we have written this file with an argument hyphen w, that means it's not gonna give us any window or any kind of uh, sign that it's working but task manager should tell you that it's working yeah there it is client.exe it's um, it's available in your task manager and if you go back to your Kali machine and say list and there you go and select zero successfully connected to that IP and say DIR and there you go you are connected to your remote computer So if you guys have any questions, please do ask me directly. Or if you have any further suggestions, you want to know something more about this project, please leave me an email or, or a message where I can reach out to you. So I think that's, that's about it about this video. Big shout out to Fred P. Vaughan, he's a genius mind, written a perfect uh, kind of tool to perform a good measure of uh, penetration testing. This tool is meant to be loud and super loud in terms of uh, in terms of penetration testing. If you're part of a red team and running this tool and uh, the blue team doesn't cover your tracks or they are not getting alerted, then there must be you know missing out some information so it's a perfect tool to run penetration testing within a controlled environment well that's about it and i hope i will see you in the next video please leave a like and a comment on this video if you really like this video and i will see you in the next one